Welcome back, everyone, to What's Up, Cuz. I'm your host, Jason Palmer, along with my cousin, the coach, Lance Irvin. Coach, what would you think? Lance think C. Irvin. Oh, Get the Lord. C. The C for champion. That, see, there you go. You're starting already. But go ahead. Let me let you finish asking your question. God forbid you don't get the proper introduction. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Coach Wade, man? You know what? Great person. And I have heard a lot of great things about him. And I remember you were telling me some things about him. But great individual, well-spoken. I mean, I thought he was great, real knowledge knowledgeable. And kudos to how he handled that situation, too, on doing on the flight with the flight attendant jay because it's easy to want to go off but man i'm glad he kept his cool i am too because you know we i'm you know i'm in the journalism business and we know what the headline would have been you know (laughs) it would not have been in his favor uh it would have been nasty it would have been it would have been a mess it would have been a mess and you know he 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 did what he needed to do in the situation you know they'd have been charging him with interfering with a federal flight and all sorts of crazy nonsense. Uh, but that's all right. We're we going to get this championship. We're going to dedicate it to the woman in seat 2A. Man, exactly, because he has his team, and they're good enough to win it, Jay. I'm looking at Seattle Storm. I'm looking at the Phoenix Mercury. The Chicago Sky, they have a great team. We have veterans. You see I'm saying we. Mm-hmm. You see I'm saying we. That's right. They have veterans. We have shooters. We have post players. And I forgot to talk to him about his defense. They play really good on defense, especially down the stretch. They're stingy on defense down the stretch. Those are the keys. They shoot it. They can run. They play with patient space. And they're stingy down the stretch on defense. Yeah, they are. So let's get to our next guest. We have uh, we wanted this guy from the very first show uh, when we did this. And he was all bored from the beginning of getting him. And we were finally <laughs> able to, to get him on the schedule and get him. You know, I I've written I I've written out this whole long introduction piece for him because he's done so much and he's meant so much to me personally. You know, I've known him since I was a kid, watching him on TV, hearing him on the radio, BMX back in the day, and all that stuff. <laughs> and you know, I was like, man, we got to get, really get this like BMX sports. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I mean, Kenny can talk about anything. He is a true blood Chicagoan through and through. So I'm looking forward to these conversations we're about to have with him. Ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Kenny McReynolds. Man, see, why you calling me a legend? That means I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> you calling me old, man. I'm not calling you old, man. You're a legend. Uh, you know, when I started when I was 10 years old. So wow. Think. I was a baby when I started. So uh, I'm not a legend. I just do what I do and just have a lot of fun doing it. And thank you guys so much for having me on this wonderful show. I have on my Chicago State Cougars <laughs> ring for my man Lance C. Irvin, who's, uh, who's going to, you know what? And let me say this, and this is me talking, you guys, this is unscripted. If the administration at Chicago State gives Lance Irvin some help, and no administration in the last 30 years has given any coach there any help, Lance is going to do great things at Chicago State, but it starts at the top. It starts with the president. It starts with that athletic director. Lance can't succeed if they don't help him. And so I'm just saying I hope this new athletic director, who I don't know, I hope he gives Lance everything Lance needs to succeed because you and I know, Jason, he will and can succeed, but it begins at the top. And this is like the 10th athletic director Chicago State has had in the last two years. So – Hey, we want them to give Lance everything he needs to be successful because we know Lance is an outstanding, not only an outstanding coach, he's an outstanding man. And he'll make his young players better young men, not just better basketball players. Now, and I mean, Kenny, you've you've covered every sport imaginable in Chicago, mm-hmm. uh, from high school to prep to our, our pro teams. Talk to me a little bit about Chicago and just what makes it a great sports town in general because chicago loves hard gritty hard-working guys to be successful in chicago you have to play i interviewed mm-hmm. reggie theus this afternoon and he's talked about how much he loves the city of chicago because they loved him they loved him back because he went out he played hard and that's the one thing about chicago athletes look at people like derrick road you know he goes out and plays hard who played a harder and put on a better show than Isaiah Thomas. That's what makes Chicago so special. It's a blue-collar city, and 
is one of the best sports towns around. I travel a lot. Man, you go to somewhere like Atlanta, they have great sports teams. Nobody shows up except for the championship <laughs> series. Chicago, they we show up. We support our teams. Blue-collar town, they love blue-collar workers. And Kenny, I, I, I just want to thank you for being on the show first and foremost. Foremost, and one thing I love about you, you gonna tell it like it is. So at the well, end, of it, like oh, it is. also, also, I wanted to wear my Brooklyn Irving T-shirt. She told hey, me to tell hey. Uncle Uncle Kenny hi because you had her on on your show years ago. So I wanted to wear my Brooklyn shirt. Until but, I got uh, my man, good we hair appreciate in. everything. <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn came down to my show, right, Jason? And I was uh -huh. about putting in my good hair. You know, uh -huh. you get the twenty dollar bottle hair and the forty dollar bottle hair. And Brooklyn was impressed with a forty dollar bottle of hair. So tell her I got the good hair in today, just for my girl Brooke. Uh, I feel honored now, Kenny. You put in the good hair for our show. Oh yeah, the good hair. Kenny, the she hair. asked the good me. Hair. Kitty Mac, she asked me. She said, "Daddy, is Kitty Mac gonna have his good hair on today?" I started cracking up. Hey, but, hey. but 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 Kitty, you so well rounded in all sports, right? What? What do you think the state of Chicago sports is right now with the Cubs, the Blackhawks? You know, Cousin Jason loved the Blackhawks over there. We have the Sox. We have the Bulls. Which franchise do you think is going in the right direction? Oh, the White Sox, without question. And I'm a White Sox fan. I'm a diehard White mm -hmm. Sox fan. I was born and raised in Wentworth Gardens, which is a block from Sox Park. But look at what the White Sox have done the last four games. They put it together. They got it going. Lewis Roberts in that outfield, along with Jimenez. Now, Mandigo, you know, the rookie got his four four base hits mm -hmm. yesterday. The White Sox are going in a great direction. Uh, I, I'm so happy that the Blackhawks got it together. You know, you get this break. You didn't think you could get this four-month break. They come out, and they win their first ball game, too. And the Cubs, you know, that window's closing a little bit from that 2016 team. Some of those guys are getting a little bit older, and you're not going to be able to keep them all. You can't sign them all. That window is closing. But I think if I had to pick one team right now on the way up, without question, in my opinion, it's the Chicago White Sox. Yeah. Once again, we're joined by Kenny McReynolds here. And uh, funny you say that, Kenny. The results of our poll question last week, we asked which Chicago sports team is more than likely going to be the next team to win the championship. So here were our results. 62% of those who responded said the White Sox would be the next team to win the championship. Oh, I didn't know that. Followed by the Sky at 23%. Mm -hmm. And then the Cubs and the Bears tied at 8%. And unfortunately, nobody believed the Blackhawks were going to win. They got 0%. <laughs> but based off of their performance, I can understand why people were thinking that. And to be truthful, Kenny, we didn't even put the Bulls on the poll because we but are – everybody is feeling about them right now and i know you have strong thoughts on that what what is going on with the, with the bulls franchise well i think they did the right thing you, you, you had to get rid of the front office i love paxton john paxton is a really good friend of mine i love pax i'm really close to his wife you could keep gar foreman i can listen to damn about gar foreman but <laughs> you know hey i tell it like it is the thing right. is that they just didn't work they didn't get it together and Michael Reinsdorf, they're like his dad, they're very, very loyal. But all of a sudden, a lot of red seats started showing up at the United Center that used to have butts in those seats. So Michael Reinsdorf said, I have to make a change. And John Paxson even went to him and said, look, we're not getting this done. Let's make a change. But here's going to be the key. Fans wanted a change, okay? We got a change. They go get our tourists, who's great. You go get Mark Eversley, who's going to be an well, outstanding general manager. You go get a great player personnel director. But you got to change the coach. Yeah, no, the players don't like him. He said some of the dumbest things in the world. Like, oh, well, we lost by 40, but we won the third quarter. This ain't the CBA. Winning the third quarter doesn't mean a damn thing. So they, they got to make a change in the coach. If you change the front office and keep the same coach, you're still going to have a lot of red seats at the United Center, especially since the players don't like the coach. And they've made it out. They made it known they don't like the coach. The first first week of the job, they had a mutiny against him. And now they're telling our tourists, we don't want this coach. We don't like this coach. So I think if they bring the same coach back, what's the big deal? You know, it's the same thing. I think you're going to have a hard time selling that to the public. Okay, 
we got your new front office, but we got the same terrible coach. It's not, it's not, not a good situation. But let me tell you this. People are going to say, why don't they fire him now? Personally, I wouldn't fire him now. And let me tell you why. You don't know when your next game is going to be. Mm. So why pay two coaches? Because you're going to have to pay somebody to come and take over this franchise. And the coach you have now has two years remaining on his contract. So why pay a coach to come in and sit down and do nothing because you don't know if you're going to even have a season next year? When is it going to start? Will it be December? Will it be January? Will it be at all? So why pay two coaches when you could pay one bad coach to sit at home and do nothing? <laughs> so like right now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fire him right now either because there's no need to hire a new coach where you don't know when your next game is going to be. You have no idea when the game is going to be. So why pay a new coach $5 million a year and pay a bad coach $2 million bucks a year? I would save the money, too, until we know when the 19 – I'm sorry, when will the 21 season start, if at all? You, you know what, Kenny? I, I, I like coach off the court. I never had to play for him, though. But mm-hmm. where did you think this all went wrong, though? I mean, was it like trying to put the time card in? And I know you touched on some of the issues, though. Where do you think right. it all just snowballed? Well, he thinks he's Greg Popovich because he works for him. As all he talked mm. about, the Popovich way, Pop did this, Pop did that. Oh, well, you ain't Popovich. And you ain't got Tim Duncan either. So be yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, you know, if you got Tim Duncan, you can do the Popovich way. Right. But just be yourself. <laughs> Go out and just remember, hey, look, I have to listen to my coaching staff. I got to get a good staff together and go out and do it. And, you know, if the guys are going to mutiny against me and boycott practice, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I know he's old school, but remember, this is a new school generation. I like the old school way. I have always taught by Ray Meyer basketball was inside out, but you have to change the times now. Now basketball is outside in, but – I don't think he changed with the time. I think he kept his old school ways. And he always talked about is Greg Popovich. But, hey, hey, if I got Tim Duncan, hell, I'll be Popovich too. <laughs> I would. Tell, yeah. tell him like it is. Hey, 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 hey give, me, give me Popovich and Tony Parker. Yeah, I'm pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Like Phil Jackson. Hey, like Phil Jackson. Man, that triangle worked real good when you got Horace, Michael, and Scotty or Dennis, Michael, and Scotty. And then you go over and then you get – Shaq and Kobe. That's when right. he went to New York, he didn't have no talent. The triangle <laughs> didn't mean a thing. What did the triangle mean you in New know, York? You know what? Let me add this, and then I'll let you go ahead, Jay, because I see you itching to ask Kenny that question. <laughs> but, but you know what a lot of coaching is, though, Kenny, that you talked about without saying it, is dealing with personalities. Yes. How will you handle the personalities? How can you blend them all together and still getting done what you want to get done and what you need to get done to win. And I think a lot of times coaches, we drop the boat because we try to make it more than what it really is. It's a different mindset. You still talk to the kids. You still can mentor them. You still nurture them. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, though, you have to understand them. And that's a part of the coaching. Dealing with personalities. You know who told me that? When uh, Antoine was at Kentucky, I had a lot lot of talks with Rick Pitino. And he told me, I know who I can push Uh and how far I can push him and who I can't push. He knew he could push Antoine. He could call Antoine and yell and scream at him. He didn't care. But other guys, you may have to let back a little bit because if you push him too much, they break and Mm -hmm. and you never get them back. So you have to know what you can do, who you can do it with, who you can push and who you can't push. That's a a great point, Lance. And of course, you're, you're a D1 coach and I'm sure you know the guys you can push and the guys you can't push. Kenny, I want to talk to you a little bit just about what is currently going on with the COVID-19 as it relates to sports in general. Obviously, the big news of the day is the number of players on the St. Louis Cardinals and within their organization. Uh, we've already had the situation with the Miami Marlins. Uh, the NBA and the WNBA and hockey chose to go with the bubble philosophy. Major right. League Baseball didn't. NFL is not choosing to go with that philosophy as well. What are your thoughts on trying to play these sports during this pandemic? Should we even be trying to do it at all? And if we should, how should we go about it? Well, I actually don't think we should, but it's all about money. Mm. Especially from the owner standpoint, they want that TV money, especially the NFL owners. They don't care about a bubble. All they want is that TV money. 
as you know, your NFL, your salary is your salary, your payroll paid in full without selling one ticket from the TV money. So they really don't care about the fans because they got the money from the TV to take care of the salaries. But I don't really think we should be playing. I don't, baseball is my favorite sport. Everybody thinks it's basketball, it's baseball. But I don't see how we're going to continue baseball. Too many people are getting sick. Basketball, the 22 teams down in Orlando in a bubble. The WNBA, they're in a bubble. See, and, and hockey, they're in a bubble. But they don't have as many teams and as many players. Well, baseball, if there's too many places, too many teams that know where to play, that you could put them in a bubble. If you can get them in a bubble and keep them in there, that would be great. But football and baseball, there's just so many teams and so many players, there's no way you could put them in one small bubble like the NBA has done and the WNBA, what they're doing right now. And I wish I had a chance to talk to the Coach Wade, man, because I want some. I need some new Chicago sky gear. <laughs> And he's a big Good Times fan. When you have him back, ask him about Good Times. He Uh-oh. loves the TV show Good Times. Oh, man. See, he's yeah. kidding. Give a tip. That's why you're a legend. See, you're not yeah. old. You're hey, a hey, legend. Lance. Hey, <laughs> hey, Lance, you got to do me a favor. What's up, kid? What's up, kid? You go man? to the office tomorrow. And, of course, I don't know your new AD. I love the Emil Jones Center. What a beautiful facility. But you guys got a $2 scoreboard that never <laughs> works. Can you ask him to get you guys a new scoreboard? One that actually works. You know what, Kitty Mac? I'm going to ask the AD if he wants to be on your show. You need to go. invite him on your show because everybody that comes to Chicago is on your show. And you okay. do an excellent job keeping us on your show from the Irvin family to Marcus Liberty to Walter Bond, Reggie Thea. I mean, you do a great job doing that. But going back to the bubble th- theory, Kenny Mac. Well, you got around that question what? real nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna get. I learned from the best. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't mean to put you on the spot. That's me talking. That's me talking, not you. So that's if your AD is watching, get a new scoreboard, one that works. What's the deal? We got a you you got ten million dollar arena show. and a two dollar scoreboard. Come on, man. Give Lance something to work with. That's my guy. Yeah, well, but anyway, what's your you question? Well, Lance? I'm sorry. But getting back to the bubble, what can be done for baseball though? Right. I mean, I just heard it's like 13 St. Louis Cardinals. Like right. if they were to finish the season, I don't think they could finish it. I don't but either. how can they finish the season? If it, I mean, maybe that's a question that can't be answered, but because it, it is, it is tough. And Lance, like you said, there are too many teams and too many players to put them in a bubble. It, it, they got 30 players on the team. What is it, 32 teams. That's, that's a lot of people. Well, mm-hmm. basketball, everybody didn't make it, and the WNBA only has 12 teams. Hockey, everybody didn't make it to the bubble. Baseball trying to get their regular season in. I just don't think you could put them in a bubble because where are you going to put that many ball players and that many teams in inside somewhere? I, 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 I like that they're going to try it, but I just don't see how they can finish it. I really don't. Uh, and I don't think they should, they should be playing. And I, I love the idea of letting guys opt out if they want. And those guys won't get their salaries, but they will get time served mm-hmm. towards their pension. And you won't be held against you if you fo- if you decide to pull out. So let's move to, to football because everybody knows this is a Bears town. Um, yeah. Training camps set to open. Uh, they canceled the entire preseason, which is the first time that you probably don't need to be doing this. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. we know, but we know they're going to push forward anyway. Uh, the Bears have already had players opt out. We're starting to see more NFL players opting out before the season as well. Um, what is what is your outlook for just the Bears in terms of the talent they already have? Um, we did bring in another quarterback that tried to challenge Trubisky, but he's kind of a journeyman. What are your overall thoughts of that franchise? Sure, time out, time out, time out. Try to challenge him, not to cut you off. Try to challenge him. You, you're not talking about Nick Foles. I know you're not talking about my guy. Go ahead, Kenny Mack. I apologize for but Nick, Nick, Nick's going to challenge him. Nick's going to give him a challenge. It would really have been great if he had a preseason this year to challenge him because last year none of the starters played in the preseason. But I think the Bears, if we get some play from the quarterback, I mean, Mitch, you know, he's, he's average at best, but he only had a few reps in college. So you knew it would take time, man. We won't talk about the two brothers that they passed on that are now one's wearing a Super Bowl ring and making a half billion dollars, which is probably why the Bears passed on them anyway, because they weren't going to pay him. And they knew that he was too good. Um, 
they got to get something for the quarterback position. And I think the play calling was last year was so predictable. I think that Matt Nagy is going to have to go back to his bag of tricks like he did the first year. The last year, he was so predictable. But if, if the play calling can get a little bit more imagination and we can get a little bit more out of the quarterback position. But, hey, but with uh, Goldman opting out opting on the out. defensive mm-hmm. line, that's going to be a big hole to feel right there, man. He's, he's one heck of a ball player. But they, they, they could make the playoffs. I think they could if the season is completed, which, I, you know, I hope the season is completed, which means this coronavirus thing has been settled down. Mm-hmm. But I, I I think it's tough when you check when you just thinking about the Patriots. They had mm-hmm. eight people opt out. Dante yeah. Hightower leaving eight million on the table. Mm. Eight million dollars on the table. I wish so, I could do that. He <laughs> say he leaving eight million on the table to, to take his three hundred fifty thousand, which he's mm-hmm. going to get. But Kenny Mack, if you were twenty seven, twenty eight, and they asked you to play, would the young Kenny Mack play? No. Not if I had the million dollars already in the bank and that eight million dollars that he's going to lose, he's going to write it off with income tax as a work loss. So you're going to get it back anyway. You're going to say, mm. I lost eight million dollars. So you're going to write it off as a loss. If I had money in the bank, no, I wouldn't play. If I young and didn't have money in the bank, I probably would play unless my accountant assured me that we can write it off as a tax loss. Then I would just sit back and my health is more important than anything. And I'm glad a lot of the guys are opting out because it shows that they're thinking more than about just sports. It also shows me they probably did a good job of saving their money. Once again, we're joined by Kenny McReynolds. Uh, Kenny, let me ask you this one. Mm-hmm. The IHSA made the decision last week um, to push back some fall sports. Some fall sports, they are going to continue a little bit, but the main one they pushed back to the spring is football. Now, Mm -hmm. we know you all host a a high school sports show. Um, What is this going to do for your show? Because I know football is a big part of the content. And also, what do you think of the IHSA decision overall? Well, first of all, the show goes on. You know, if I have high school sports or not, I can get Lance to come down and do a show (laughs) with me. So we're going to get – the show will go on. The show will always go on. That's for good, for sure. The IHSA, I don't think they had a choice. They're trying to save the season so these young men can can play and maybe get some late scholarship offers because, you know, if you're really good, as Lance would tell you, we'll wait for you. But a lot of guys say, hey, I want to go. And there's a lot of guys are transferring now. Say, we're going to go to another state where we can play, graduate early, start college in January to get into the weight room. And a lot of guys want to get those scholarship opportunities. Well, I think playing in the spring was a smart thing to do, maybe the only thing to do, because it would give us the time to get a, a vaccine for this horrible coronavirus. All it was going to take is one person to get sick on a football team for people to yell at the IHSA saying, hey, you shouldn't let them play football as a contact sport. Guys are sweating on each other and they're all touching each other. So I think it was the only choice that they had to make. But oh, my show, the show will go on. We'll find somebody to come on the show, man. I, it could be the Kenny and Lance show. Lance will come down every week. <laughs> no, Kenny, you know Corey Irvin won't let that happen. Oh, the well, we know Kenny Corey's and Corey on. Irvin show. Oh. Kenny and Paula oh. Irvin show. Yeah, Corey and Paula, they're my girls. See, they take care of me, man. <laughs> you know, boy, hey, man, Jason, Nick, I was, I was sick one day, and my family was gone, and he said, "Well, you know, Kenny, you're going to go to a nursing home. You can't go home by yourself." I called Paula. Paula, she said, "Come on, man, we'll have room." For you. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, we'll make room and you know two and a half years ago when i was extremely ill and everybody thought i was going to die i actually died and came back you know corey came down to the hospital man and she spent what we thought was my last day of my life in the hospital with me so corey and paula always got a spot on the show man ain't no problem there <laughs> right right and, and kenny you know we you know a lot of us knew about the health challenges talk talk to me a little bit about uh going through that and then coming out of it one when I died? Yeah. Uh, okay. I uh, I had a tumor on my sh- on my arm right here. I don't know if you can see the scar mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. there. Yep. So it was a big, giant tumor. So we take the tumor off. Uh, then the doctor told me I can go home. I said, man, I don't know, man. I don't feel a way. I don't know. Maybe I should stay. No, no, no. You can go home. So I go home. Two days later, I'm deathly ill. 
man, I I'm had a fever was up to like 104. Man, I'm throwing up. I didn't know who I was. Uh, they rushed me back to the hospital. Uh, I had like 20 IVs. They called in a crisis team in the room, and all these doctors are looking at me. Uh, I think most of them didn't need to be there. They just want to send me a bill. Uh, the one lady doctor said, I don't know what to do. I said, You're asking me for hell. I don't know what to do either. <laughs> and, uh, you a doctor? What are you asking me for? And so uh, I felt myself getting really weak. And the, you know, you're hooked up to the heart machine and the cardiologist guy yelling at him. Said, hey, guys, he's, you know, heart's raised. He's down to 10. He's down to four. And then I remember being down, him saying, I'm down to four. And next thing I know, I heard a doctor say, Let's call it official date of death, October 2nd, 2017. And open my eyes. Said, oh, that's a shame. Somebody died. Who died? Said, you. Said, you. I said, no, I didn't. And uh, it was probably the scariest thing. Um, my life was very scary. I was extremely sick. I mean, you get a temperature up like 104, like that. Uh, I was extremely ill. I've been in the hospital 17 days. But actually hear those words and i never want to hear those words again official date of death when you're talking about me mm -hmm. uh, that's not a thing that you want to hear but thank god and i'm very blessed that i survived it uh i'm very thankful every day that i've survived it as lance well knows i've had 42 overall operations not even counting that situation being in the hospital 17 days mm -hmm. but i'm here i thank god that i'm here every day and I'm a real big fan of Bill Withers' song, It's a Lovely Day. I play it every day, especially when I wake up. It's a lovely day. Every day is a lovely day. Yeah. We got about 30 more seconds left in this segment. Okay. But Kenny, I still got some stuff I want to talk to you about in terms of the media and high school yeah. sports in Chicago. Can you hang on with us after our commercial break and come back and talk okay. about that subject? Because right. I just think it's such an important subject right now and what is going on in Chicago high school sports and the media coverage. There have been cuts all over the place. And, you know, it's, it's, it's important that we cover these young people in athletics. It really is. So we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be back on What's Up Cuz. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody, to What's Up, Cuz. I'm your host, Jason Palmer, and I'm joined by Lance C. Irvin, there my good cousin go. who's with us, our special guest this week, Kenny McReynolds. You can check out Kenny on Sports Edition on WCIU, whether they're high school sports or not, Kenny having a show. That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny having, having a show. show. <laughs> oh, I got a show. We got a show. Believe me, I, we got a show. That's right. That's right. The show guy, keep going, Kenny. Um, right now, though, I'm going to bring in – we've changed things up a little bit for this week because we had some some guests had to change some times. I'm going to bring in Joseph Phillips from the Chicago Crusader with us right now. He's usually on with us at the top of the show. There he is, my man Joe. What's up, man? What's up, guys? Get a shirt that fit, man. What's up, Kenny? Kenny told you get a <laughs> shirt that fit and stop <laughs> wearing a shirt. Kenny, don't y'all see? Kenny, Kenny, last time you saw me, I wasn't married, brother. I'm married now, man. So my wardrobe is changing a little bit. <laughs> so don't hate, he brother. Don't more. hate. Don't hate. And he has his hey, Peloton hey. bike right there too. <laughs> <laughs> See, he eating a little more now. That's oh, what he is. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm doing three course meals now, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> no that's what it is. Okay. No more microwave popcorn. Bachelor's life. 
I heard I that. You trying to show off in pecs or something? <laughs> <laughs> the guns, baby, the guns. <laughs> so, Kitty, before we go on the break, um, so here's my thing. Okay, I I got into journalism my junior year at Chicago State, and I learned journalism because but I learned the business and how to actually create and write a story while out on deadline by watching other reporters who came to cover Chicago State games. So Bill Jouse, Lynn Zine, you know, all kind of took me under their wing and showed me how to do a couple of things. Uh, people like Larry Gross, who was at the Chicago Defender, you and Jeff Blaney, mm -hmm. you know, for what you guys do on the TV side. Most people break into this business because they learn how to cover high school sports, Kenny. But now we're seeing at the Tribune and the Sun-Times, they're not hardly covering the high school sports. They, they're only covering boys football and they're only covering boys basketball, which is just enraged Corey Irvin. Talk to me yeah. a little bit about our industry and the media. And Joseph can appreciate this too. And what, what are we doing that is wrong by not covering these high school sports? What do you think is going to be the long-term effect? Well, I think the one thing that I'm sad about is because there's a big fan base out there doing high school. Of course, on at WCIU, we do high school football and basketball live broadcast, and also on CN 100. There's a big following out there and a loyal following. You're talking about people breaking into the business, covering high school sports. Look at Fred Mitchell. Fred Mitchell used to be a prep writer mm -hmm. for the Tribune, and he went on to have his own column. I started out covering doing nothing but high school sports. It is a tremendous thing to do. And you get to know these youngsters when they're young, nice. You know, they're not the pros with the egotistical. They're happy to get the coverage. Parents love it. And it just breaks my heart to see the Sun-Times and the Tribune not doing high school sports at all. And girls basketball or tennis, remember, track and field? Yes. There's a lot of high school athletes that go out there and give 110%, and you wouldn't even know it at all unless somebody's parent or athletic director calls you up and will tell you about it, where in the old days, you had tons of stories. I mean, who was more popular in the city of Chicago than Taylor Bell was? Yep. Oh. Taylor Bell, he, not only, you know, he did such a great job with high school basketball, but he did other high school sports as well, although basketball was his baby, but he had a story and a column and a notebook every single day. We knew what this guy was thinking. We knew where this guy was going to go. We knew where this guy was going to take a visit, and he kept us involved. And when you go to these high school football games, especially in the suburbs, there's six, seven, eight thousand people there. You go to best basketball games, you can't get in. You know, there's five, six thousand people crammed into a gym. People love high school sports, but unfortunately, with today's society and the budget cuts, we're losing it. And I think a lot of our youngsters are not getting the uh, the, the press that they deserve. And also, some coach may pick it up, but somebody, oh. I didn't know this guy. Okay, let's go see him. And you never know. Lance may pick up the paper and say, oh, man, Joe Smith is at so-and-so school. Let me go over there. I didn't know this. Let me go see him. You know, some of those guys slip through the cracks. Not many, but some of them do. But, I man, it, it breaks my heart to pick up the paper and not know all of the scores. And there's nothing about the girls' games in there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what about track and field? I'm a yeah. track and field guy. Right. What about baseball school? Softball. You know, what about baseball? Softball, yeah. right. Yeah. And it's a shame that our student athletes are not getting all the publicity that they really, really deserve. Because they work extremely hard. Totally agree. Okay. Totally agree with Kenny. Uh, just when it comes to um, how does that affect black athletes lack of press, um, Kenny, when it comes to not getting the necessary coverage um, that's needed? Well, you know, again, I think it can go back to scholarship opportunities. If some some guys fall through the cracks, and if you don't get the uh, press and get that recognition that you could get, that maybe everybody can see, that hurts a lot. And I don't see why our African American athletes always have to be the ones to suffer. One thing I'm so proud about our game of the week: we go everywhere. We go to suburbs. We go to the city. Football mm -hmm. and basketball. We go inside of the classroom. We always try to highlight positive things. Even on Sports Edition, uh, we worked closely with CPS to get student athletes on TV. Derrick Rose will tell you. He learned how to can do interviews by coming on my show in high school. We had yep. him on a lot. We worked with him on how to conduct the interview. Things like this are very beneficial, especially, I think, 
to our young African American athletes? All right, Ken, I got the million dollar question for you. Million, okay. million dollar question. I'm gonna <laughs> test your sports knowledge here. Uh oh. Let me see. You've been covering <laughs> Chicago sports for about what 25, 30 years, Kenny Mac? Maybe. Okay, Give about 10, 15 years. years. Yeah, right. <laughs> Who's the best press athlete you ever covered? The best prep athlete you ever covered. Athlete. You don't have a lot of people mad at not, you. Not basketball player. Ath that's, total that's overall right. athlete. Yeah. Overall athlete. Antoine Randall. Oh. Yeah. I, I, he I, did I, do I, a lot of thought that. now. I thought you was gonna say Ben Ben Wilson Marks. No, no, no. Go ben, ahead. Ben I'll let Wilson. you roll with that. No, no. You said athlete. You didn't say player. You did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the best basketball player we saw is Ben Wilson, hands down. I mean, oh, athlete. Even I said thing. athlete. I said yeah, athlete. You said great athlete. answer on your part. Go ahead. Yeah, break yeah. down Antoine Redner L because he was a great athlete. Now yeah, you know what he played best basketball. He played football. football. He could play baseball. Him. I tell you what is Antoine and Randall L and Ty Streets. Those mm. were the best athletes. You know, the Ty Streets jump out the gym. I did the mm -hmm. state championship games where he jumped over Kevin Garnett down in Champagne and dunked over him. Uh, mm -hmm. Antoine Randall was just a tremendous athlete. He could do so many things. He was fast. He was strong. He was smart. He was a complete athlete. But now, as far as player and basketball player, I mean, I tell people I never hesitate. Ben Wilson was the best basketball player I ever saw. And I'll take him. And I saw LeBron James in high school. Mm -hmm. But Ben Wilson could do so many things, handle the ball. He was Magic Johnson with a jump shot. And remember, people used to walk around the, down around the south of Chicago like this. You know, Ben had them long fingers. You know, right, Ben had them right. long fingers. Right. And a jump shot. I mean, you see people walking like this. And the fingers, the long fingers hanging down here. But best basketball player I ever saw, without question, Ben Wilson. Best athlete, it'd be Antoine Randall, but Ty Streets, maybe like that close. Best winner I ever saw, it's got to be in that athlete category too. No question, the best winner was Quinn Buckner. Mm. Oh, nice. See, I wasn't covering sports then. I remember right. just watching him play. And you, and you, know, what, and you, you know what's funny about that, Kenny? The three players you mentioned, Ty Street, Antoine Randall, Quinn Buckner, mm. two of them played at Thornton. Quinn played at Thorn Ridge. All out there yeah. in the South Suburbs. And I think a lot of people outside of Chicago, they focus on just the players from Chicago. But if you include our metropolitan area, I mean oh, unbelievable. You up to North Chicago or Waukegan, or you can go out west to Proviso East. I mean, right. the whole area is just loaded with talent in a bunch yeah. of parts. you know, give give me the best female athlete you ever saw come out of Chicago in high school. Athlete or player now? Athlete. We're going to stay with that. <laughs> okay. Um, help me. She played for Corey. Uh, oh, goodness. somebody with me, y'all? Amanda. What was, the, what was Amanda's last Amanda name? Amanda Thompson. Amanda Thompson. Thompson. Best athlete, yes. Best really? player, Candace Parker. Best athlete, Amanda Thompson. Amanda Thompson. She was an unbelievable athlete. She was a pretty she good was. player, too. I had a great career, but man, she was a, she was strong. She was quick. She could jump. She was she was that she was an athlete. She may have been better than Antoine Randall, but uh, <laughs> oh. she, she was an athlete. She was an athlete. Yeah, yes, yeah, she, no, was. Yeah. She, man, she was. She was tremendous athlete. But far but far as players concerned, uh, female, I would go with uh, Candace Parker. Okay, got gotcha. taking Candace over Cappy Poindexter. Huh? Yeah. Okay. that much. <laughs> <Smart> <laughs> not, not much. Everybody is this much, Lance. Remember yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, everybody's that much. Everybody by that much. I got one last question for you, Kenny. Once again, we appreciate you coming on. Um, and Thanks. check out, please, everybody, check out Sports Edition. Uh, it's a really good show. And, you know, Kenny has a lot of athletes from all over the Chicago area on that show. So please check it out when it comes back on. What, what's your start date, Kenny? Do you have one yet? Uh, we don't have a start date yet, but hey, man, the reruns are good too. Oh, there you go. You know, I'm the reruns, man. That's hey, right. Hey, man, you still we rerun like Harold Baines. There you Harold go. Baines did a whole show. Uh, so yeah, yeah, the reruns are good too. The station is closed, so gotcha. we haven't opened the station yet. That's why we're rerunning. But I've been doing things on my uh Facebook page and my uh, uh YouTube channel. 
which right. you can subscribe to, please free. And like this week, it'll be Reggie Thieves. I did Isaiah Thomas uh, last week. Not nice. this week last on. week. Nice. Yeah, there you yeah, go. There you go. Hey, run man, the rerun. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, run the reruns. Get get that hey, residual money, Facebook. Kenny. And, and, Tell and them to pay you the residual fees too. Hey, man, they ought to pay me up for, for the first run. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the rerun. Pay me for the first run. <laughs> so I guess my hey, final man. question for you, Kenny, yeah. is you've seen it change through the years. Uh, how players are recruited. Obviously, it's more now on the uh, on the travel ball scene as opposed to the high school. But you're also seeing the athletes now specialize in a sport at an earlier age. What are your thoughts on today's youth athletes specializing in a sport, uh, almost like right when they get into high school? Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of old school. I like playing more than one sport because suppose you don't, you're not successful in one, one sport. And I think if you play more than one sport, you're always gonna be in great physical condition. I think if you can play more than one sport, you should, but I really have no problem with the specialization. I'm old school and think everybody should play uh, more than one sport, but you're right now. Once guys get into high school, football coach don't want their guys playing basketball. Basketball don't want their guys playing football. I'm old school. I like you can play both, but I really have no problem with the guys specializing in one. Especially uh, anyway, let's take a guy like Derrick Rose. He could have played football, but obviously he's going to be an NBA player in high school, so mm-hmm. he stayed away without getting hurt to specialize in that. And that was a smart move. But either way, I'm okay with it. Well, Kenny, once again, thank you for coming in and joining us. And we uh, really appreciate it. And, you know, again, on a personal note, you're one of the people who I've always looked up to in this business. And I appreciate everything. You know, you would just pull me off to the side, give me some pointers. And I know you do the same with Joseph. And see, I know you do that with a lot of people. And I don't think you get credit for that. And I know you're doing it out of love. And I just right. wanted to tell you, you know, personally, I appreciate everything you and Blaney told me when we were sitting up there in that press box at Gately, freezing our asses off because they ain't had no week. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, hey, no heat. You're right. We we did a lot of games today on TV with no heat, boy. I'll be like, well, y'all hurry up and get a running clock, man. <laughs> right. But hey, hey, I want to thank you guys for having me on the show. You guys do a tremendous job. It's great to see African American men get together and talk sports, and I really appreciate the invitation. And whenever I'm available, if you guys want me, if I'm available, I would love to come back. And Lance, we're gonna get your athletic director on my show because I need a new scoreboard in that beautiful <laughs> arena at Chicago State. That two-cent scoreboard ain't worth a damn because it don't never work. <laughs> and we want to say Cougars, not home and visitors, you know? So we want to get you a new scoreboard. <laughs> and I want to get all the help we can to help this young man out of Chicago State, where he will not only Very make your, your, your student athletes better basketball players, he'll turn them into tremendous young men. And that's the most important thing for a coach. And I have all the faith in the world that Lance Irvin is the right man to do that, providing he gets help from the administration. Thank you, Kenny Mack. But hold on, though. You know I always got to ask one part in question. Jason, know okay. that. Go on. <clears throat> Who's your favorite Irvin to cover? Lance <laughs> Irvin, Byron Irvin, Mike, Nick, hey, Corey hey, Irvin? That's easy. That's Irvin. easy. Come on. That's come on. Easy. Oh, wait. <laughs> that's easy. I'm waiting. Listen to this, Corey, John. Corey and Brooke, my favorite Irvin to cover. Wow. I'm confused. He went with Corey Hambrook. Hey. He went with your daughter over you, man. <laughs> hey, hey, man, Brooke was a heck of a volleyball player, man. She's on scholarship now. That's right. And you know, hey, hey, Corey, hey, Corey sure, sure, sure. is always going to be top notch with Corey. She kept Joseph, spending time with no me respect. in the hospital. <laughs> right. And actually, she called me up and had me come over and get some ribs on the 4th of July. Oh. Man, you know I'm – Course, you, tell, you know what? Hey, Jace, cut, cut, Kitty Mac. I'm <laughs> hurt, Kitty Mac. <laughs> All right, Kitty, now you gotta go. Cut, <laughs> cut, cut, Kitty Mac. Kitty, I love you. Thanks, you like family. Thanks for everything. We Thanks, Kitty it. Mac. Take care of yourself. Thank All you, right. guys. All right, bye bye. So much. All right, continue, thank you. Success. All right. All right. All right, thank you. Bye bye. That was a legend, <laughs> Kenny McReynolds. Oh, we lost Joe. Oh, there he is. All right, yeah, Joseph. Hey, uh, uh, yeah, but Joe. we can't get rid of you that quick. Before we get started, now, Joseph. Joseph, join us. If I'm not your favorite, Irvin Joseph, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> hey, brother. Hey, man. All I gotta say, shout out to Lance. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. <laughs> Are you the only Irvin with a sports show and play? So I think that's the first, right? There you go. Oh, there no, you go. thank you, T. You made me feel good. I feel good. Now. All right, Joseph, let's go. Let's go.